Hi, Max Wright here, and I'm making this video to answer the question, is it possible for there to be a fully decentralized Bitcoin exchange completely free of any counterparty risk? Now, I thought the answer was no for the longest time. I mean, exchanges need to hold fiat currency. Those currencies need to be in banks or somewhere, and uh, you're inherently going to have counterparty risk when dealing with fiat currencies. So I was very pleased to find out that actually it is possible. Uh, there is a way to do it. And in fact, the majority of the components necessary to do it have been built. And I think we're not too far away from an actually, uh, actually having a fully decentralized Bitcoin exchange in the orders of weeks or months. So in this video, I want to discuss a couple of those points. I want to discuss three things. One is why do we need a, a decentralized exchange? The second thing is how would it work? And thirdly, what are the components required to make it work? So why do we need a decentralized Bitcoin exchange? Well, recently we just saw another tragic hack, uh, Bitter, B-T-E-R.com. Uh, they're an exchange out of China. They had 7,000 Bitcoin stolen. Uh, and sadly, it looks like most of their depositors will lose the majority, if not all, of their funds. So huge losses incurred there. Uh, this happened just about a month after there was a hack at Bitstamp. At that time, 19,000 Bitcoin stolen. Uh, fortunately, I think in that instance, Bitstamp were going to cover the losses and the depositors were left unscathed. And there are actually some smaller uh, hacks in between there. So this it's, it's a really frequent occurrence. And of course, we don't need to cast our minds back too far to the Mt. Gox fiasco, $700 million in Bitcoin stolen by hackers. So why do these hacks uh, keep on happening? Now, it's really easy to maybe say, oh, it's bad management or bad security practices. Or maybe you're one of those people who think maybe the government should get involved and we just need good regulation. Well, I don't think any of those things are, are to blame. I think it's actually far more systemic than that. And it's actually simple economics. Uh, these exchanges just have collectively have hundreds of millions of dollars sitting there in Bitcoin uh, and they need to to operate the way they presently operate. And this creates a hacker's wet dream. And so the more that the, of those funds that are sitting there in one place, then the more resources and the more attention, the more effort that these hackers are going to spend trying to get in to steal these Bitcoins. And as the price and value of Bitcoin goes up, as the ecosystem increases, then the resources that the hackers are going to dedicate to the thefts are going to increase as well. So it's going to be a problem that plagues the Bitcoin community until it is solved once and for all by a decentralized exchange. Now, there's a second reason that uh, we really need a decentralized exchange. For those of you who may remember, um, after the Mt. Gox fiasco, a disgruntled employee uh, leaked the server logs from Mt. Gox. And some of the Bitcoin community members went through those logs and discovered there were some very suspicious uh, transactions in those logs. And it appears that the operators of the Mt. Gox order book were actually skimming. They were giving um, their orders preferential treatment in order to skim some profits out of that order book away from customers like you and I. And so a fully decentralized open source exchange would obviously solve that problem as, as well. So we can't prove it as yet that it's happening anywhere else, but I'll bet my bottom dollar that somewhere on at least some of the exchanges out there, there are some shenanigans going on and we're all the victims of it. So a decentralized exchange would solve these two massive problems. One, it would take away that huge carrot, the hacker's wet dream, which is this big pool of Bitcoin. And secondly, it would provide an open source, cryptographically provable, honest order book. So how would a decentralized Bitcoin exchange work? How can we remove this giant carrot so hackers simply move on and do something else with their time. Well, the first thing to understand is that what we call exchanges today, Bitfinex, Bitstamp, they actually provide two separate and distinct services. Now, the first service is that of a gateway. So that's our opportunity for us to send them our US dollar, say, or fiat. They can then send us back Bitcoin or we can send them Bitcoin. They can send us back fiat. Now, the, these services inherently, they have counterparty risk because those US dollars have to be sitting somewhere and there's very little way to avoid that. Localbitcoins.com does a pretty good job of decentralizing that as best as it can be. But there is always going to be counterparty risk in this gateway function. But this is actually the smaller part of what exchanges actually do. The second service an exchange offers is to run the order book. Now that's a place where you can go and put a buy order and a sell order. Those orders are matched, uh, assets are transferred. And this is obviously a very, very important function. It's where we get the Bitcoin price from this marketplace. But it's also the source of the huge carrot that is the hacker's wet dreams. So let me explain that a little bit further. When you're using the gateway functions, if you just want to turn fiat into Bitcoin, 
you you know you could send some service some dollars and uh, maybe they could send you Bitcoin after as soon as the funds clear they can send you Bitcoin for domestic transfers that could be like a 24 hour turnaround uh, you're not exposed to counterparty risks for long periods of time although you are exposed but the order book is a different animal entirely in order for the uh, exchange to properly run the order book they have to have both huge pools of fiat and huge pools of Bitcoin if you make an order the exchange has to hold your fiat and your Bitcoin so that it can execute the, uh, your order when it's matched. Now, this is what creates the huge carrot for the hackers because these orders could sit on the books for days, weeks, months, or even years. This creates tremendous counterparty risk on both sides. With regards to Bitcoin, you have this hacker's wet dream where they want to go and steal this huge pool of Bitcoin. With regard to your fiat currency sitting in the bank accounts of these uh, exchanges, you know, after the fiasco of the Cyprus bail-in of 2013, uh, we know that banks just aren't safe. In fact, not too long ago, there was a G20 summit in Brisbane been held by all the major countries of the world and they basically agreed the next time there's a crisis there's going to be a bail-in so even leaving you think you're in the world of crypto but if you send in your fiat dollars to, and it's sitting on the order book in an exchange you're very much vulnerable to counterparty risk and so decentralized exchange can remove both of these problems so now a more precise question comes into focus is it possible for the order book to be completely decentralized and removed of all counterparty risk? If that were to happen, what we think of as exchanges today, they'd be reduced to merely gateways and the users would be far more protected. Those, the huge carrot that is the hacker's wet dream, 95% of that would no longer exist because users would retain their funds while it's sitting on the order book. The blockchain would hold it and the users could cancel those order with their private keys and get those funds back whenever they wanted. That would be powerful. So how would a decentralized Bitcoin exchange work? Well, to begin with, you would need a marketplace that exists on the blockchain. Think of something like the Open Bazaar project. Buyers and sellers could come, they could place their orders on the blockchain. The blockchain could execute and match those orders. Now, the primary difference between that and, uh, and Open Bazaar is that the, the blockchain would need to hold both sides of the transaction. So in Open Bazaar, you might go and sell a fridge secondhand, for example, and uh, the blockchain doesn't actually hold the Bitcoin or the fridge, of course. It's a place for buyers and sellers to meet. But a decentralized exchange would have to hold the Bitcoin and hold the US dollars, match the orders, and uh, exchange them. If your first instinct is anything like mine, you might be thinking, well, I understand how a blockchain could hold Bitcoin, but a blockchain can't hold uh, US dollars or fiat. Of course, you're absolutely correct. But what if an economically sound, cryptographically provably securitized digital asset was created that tracked the price of the US dollar? Then the blockchain could hold that and the market could function very, very well. So let's recap on what is required for a decentralized Bitcoin exchange to work. The first component is a blockchain that runs the order book. It accepts buy and sell orders. It accepts digital assets. When, an order, when a buy and a sell is matched, it transfers the assets and the different owners can use their private keys to recoup their funds. Now, the second component required is a digital asset that uses blockchain technology, has private keys that the, that the blockchain can hold that tracks the US dollar. And the third component that is required is that a, this blockchain that is the marketplace, it needs to be able to hold Bitcoin. Now this is actually a little bit harder than it might sound. Bitcoin is already, uh, is already a digital asset. It's already counterparty free. You'd think it would be the easy part, but what, for a decentralized exchange to be trusted, it obviously needs to be open sourced. So how can an open source blockchain hold the private keys to Bitcoin? So this is a little bit of a challenge. The good news is that two out of these three components are already built and working well. And I suspect the, th the third component will have a solution in the not too distant future. But in the meantime, we have a very acceptable workaround. The first piece of the puzzle, a blockchain that can run an order book. Well, we already have that. The BitShares blockchain does exactly this for its internal digital assets. It's been operating for over six months and has processed tens of thousands of transactions. So from right here in the BitShares client, which is the decentralized exchange, you can see there's a number of marketplaces already. You can see here there's the BitUSD versus BitShares itself. There's a Chinese yuan against the BTS and lots of different markets here. And you can choose lots of different digital assets to trade against. We're going to click in here now to the BitUSD BitShares. Uh, we'll scroll down a little bit here and you can see here it is. Here are all the open buy orders that are sitting on the blockchain and all of the open sell orders that are sitting on the blockchain. Uh, we have the graphical representations of that here and uh, we can play around with different prices and mechanisms in here. Uh, all the candlesticks and so forth. 
Right here, from you can uh, buy or sell BitUSD against BitShares, uh, just like you expect with a normal exchange, except that the digital assets are all free of counterparty risk, and when your orders are sitting on the order book and the blockchain takes control of your funds, your funds are totally decentralized on the blockchain and cannot be hacked. So this is a real leap in technology and it's here and it's been working well for some time. The second component that is needed is an economically sound digital asset that tracks the price of the US dollar. Now, I've already created another video that tells you all about how that works. It's called a BitUSD and it's also available on the BitShares blockchain. Uh, I'll leave a link below this to about how BitUSD works so you can find that out for yourself. But what's important for our purposes here is that it works, it's cryptographically provably securitized and it's economically sound. The third piece of the puzzle is the only piece just out of reach. How can an open source blockchain hold the private keys to a Bitcoin address? Now this certainly is a challenge, but in my experience in the Bitcoin community, the impossible is usually just a few months away from manifesting. So I don't know how it's going to happen, but if Satoshi could uh, solve the Byzantine generals problem, I'm sure someone in the Bitcoin community can hold that. Now in the meantime, we have a pretty acceptable workaround as well. Just like we have BitUSD, which is a digital asset fully securitized that tracks the price of the US dollar, we have BitBTC. It's a fully securitized digital asset that tracks the price of Bitcoin, and we can trade that on the decentralized exchange. Now to give you an idea of how this might work, you might use an exchange like metaexchange.info as an example of one, which will allow you to trade straight from Bitcoin into BitBTC. Now these things trade at you know, pretty close to a one-to-one -one ratio. There's a small spread in there. Um, but basically this will get you from Bitcoin into BitBTC, which is the digital asset that tracks Bitcoin in the exchange. It's very simple to use. Just click on the exchange that you want. You might, if you want to buy BTC with Bitcoin, you just type in your uh, BitShares account name in there, click submit, and then you can go ahead and deposit your Bitcoin into this address here. Now I should, want, now I should be uh, clear here, this exchange, the Meta Exchange, this is the only time where you experience counterparty risk. From when you send the Bitcoin to Meta Exchange, in about 10 or 15 minutes after the confirmations have come through, they will send you back uh, bit BTC. At that point, you no longer have counterparty risk again. But there was this small period when you were using the gateway functions in and out that you were exposed to counterparty risk. Once you've received BTC, you can go back into your BitShares client and start trading BTC against the BitUSD. And there you have it, a totally decentralized Bitcoin exchange free of all counterparty risk. And it's achieved using the digital assets BitUSD and BitBTC. If you're not familiar with how these assets work, I highly recommend you click uh, the link that's in the description of this video, which is how does BitUSD work? Now the good news is a browser-based client has just been released. So for those of you who are interested, you can go and tinker around and play with this. Now, huge caveats here. Um, while the underlying protocol of um, the exchange uh, and, and BitUSD and the cryptographic digital assets, they've all been very well tested. They've been working for six months. Uh, the GUI and the user interface and the uh, user experience is all a little bit behind. So if you're somebody who wants a polished product, don't bother going and looking at it. You'll just get frustrated with it. But if you're you know, one of the innovators, if you like seeing what's coming through the pipeline and maybe even want to get involved and help further the project, um, you actually can go online and check it out. You can go to wallet.bit shares.org and uh, get yourself a free account, play around with the exchange. Um, you might have to battle through a few GUI glitches and things like that, but um, it's there for you and you actually can tinker with it. I really hope you enjoyed this bitshares.tv video. If you want to help BitShares achieve its mission of securing life, liberty and property for all, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Share it on social media like Facebook and Twitter and subscribe to this channel to get all the future updates. If you are new to BitShares, you might want to check out the BitShares 101 series by clicking the thumbnail below me. It walks you through all the basics, including how to get started by downloading your free wallet and creating a free account. Or you can check out our featured topic. See you in the next video.